Hey there, my friend, welcome. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder here at The Fit Father Project. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what our team's thoughts are on artificial sweeteners. And I shouldn't even really say our thoughts, I should say, um, what is the research? Because that's what we're gonna base this off of. Um, and artificial sweeteners are a big deal. They're pretty much everywhere. And as people out here who wanna live healthy lives, we wanna decrease the amount of sugar we're having. So naturally, it seems like when there's all these diet options out there, like your diet Cokes or your low sugar snacks that have some of these sweeteners, they seem like great ideas, right? Well. It turns out from the research that there is a dark side to artificial sweeteners. So um, in today's video, I wanna cover a couple of the main artificial sweeteners, some of the problems that we're realizing they cause, as well as one healthy alternative that actually is supported by the research to be something healthy we can have because there is a sweetener that does work well. So you're gonna learn a ton in this video, get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com all right, so what are artificial sweeteners? Well, artificial sweeteners are non-sugar-based compounds that still interact with the taste receptors on our tongue and give us a sense of sweetness, um, even though they don't actually have sugar um, and calories in them. And we've synthesized a lot of these in the lab, and that's what makes them artificial. And some of the main ones you might be familiar with are things like sucralose, um, which goes by the brand name Splenda, aspartame, which goes by the brand name NutraSweet or Equal, um, or saccharin, which goes by the name Sweet and Low. And so if you've ever been to a, a restaurant or a cafe and you see on the little table, they have all those sleeves of those different colored little packets, those are all the artificial sweeteners out there. And they work um, in different ways, and all of them are pretty much synthesized in labs to kind of trick our taste buds. And they seem really great on paper, right? Something that tastes sweet, um, but that we don't really necessarily absorb very well and certainly doesn't have any calories. But we find from the research, now that we actually have some human studies, um, is that these artificial sweeteners do cause our bodies to release insulin and they can cause our blood sugar to go uh, a little bit haywire because our body releases insulin. Because it turns out that even though we don't actually absorb these things as calories, just the taste of sweetness on our tongue is enough to trigger our brain to say, okay, sugar's on the way because up to this point in history before we started synthesizing artificial sweeteners every time our tongues felt you know sweet coming that meant that we're eating carbohydrates and our brain talks to our pancreas and says hey let's start secreting some insulin because there's blood sugar that's about to be coming into the system well what happens when blood sugar doesn't come into the system because there's actually no sugar in the sweetener but we still have the sweet taste well insulin levels do rise and what that does is insulin levels rise, it starts to clear some of the blood sugar out of our, our system and we're not actually putting new blood sugar in because these sweeteners don't have sugar. So ultimately what happens is we can have a dip in our blood sugar. And what that does is leads us feeling you know, crabby, lower in energy, we feel this blood sugar swing, and we can even start to crave more sweet foods. So that's problem number one with these sweeteners is our brain can't really differentiate whether this is actual sugar or fake sugar so we secrete insulin as a result. And when we secrete insulin over over time, this can contribute to insulin resistance, which is this kind of pre-diabetes picture. And when insulin's constantly high, it blunts our fat burning and causes a whole host of metabolic problems. Insulin is not the bad guy, but what we do want is healthy insulin. We want it to rise and fall and not be chronically elevated. Um, artificial sweeteners, especially if we use them all the time, can really throw off our insulin signaling, which can lead to weight gain. Again, some of these mood and energy swings, not good. But the problems don't stop there. The next problem is we actually learned from the research that um, our entire digestive tract, from our mouth all the way down to our butt, is filled with gut bacteria. You've probably heard of these things called probiotics, and there's a lot of probiotic supplements. These are just the good gut bacteria that live in a symbiotic relationship with our bodies in our entire digestive tract, and they help us break down food. They act as our immune system. They really help fight all the things that we might eat that are not good for us. They help battle the bad bugs. Um, they actually help our brain produce neurotransmitters, um, and they're implicated in all sorts of things from um, the amount of weight we can lose. There's a difference between the gut bacteria of people who are lean and people who are obese, so they play a huge role in our health. The gut bacteria are massively important, and here's the punchline, the artificial sweeteners really can wreak havoc on our gut microbiome. 
These artificial sweeteners can kill the good bacteria and lead to overgrowth of the bad bacteria, which causes a domino effect of all these different health problems. So, okay, your artificial sweetener doesn't have calories on paper, but it's spiking my insulin and it's harming my gut bacteria, which in the long run is gonna cause problems. And we've seen this from the actual data in the research studies, is when we started introducing more artificial sweeteners, we had a dramatic increase in the amount of insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, and in fact, I think China is a really interesting study because um, they found when they introduced artificial sweeteners a lot later than some of the other developed countries, they had a tenfold increase in metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, and diabetes from the point when they did the artificial sweeteners. Now, that's an association, not a causation, but if we look at some of the actual uh, molecular things that actually happen in our bodies when we have these artificial sweeteners, you know, the puzzle starts to kind of add up and it really does some problems. So for the most part, here's what I recommend. You steer clear of artificial sweeteners, especially at high doses. If you're the kind of person that is having diet sodas all the time, we gotta cut that crap. Sure, it might not have calories, but it is causing metabolic problems. And another thing I wanna add too is that there is a big benefit to not constantly having your tongue be exposed to sweet things. See, our tongues get bombarded all the time by these super sweet things. And some of these artificial sweeteners can be 100 to 1,000 times sweeter than sugar when you're comparing each molecule, right? And so if we're constantly getting this signal of super sweet things, um, it actually, de uh, it's like, I should say, it downregulates some of the receptors on the tongue and desensitizes us to sweet tastes. So we constantly have this almost muted tongue. So when we do eat something that's naturally sweet, like blueberries or strawberries or a really good high quality fruit that's good for us, um, ultimately it doesn't taste as good for a, for a palate and a tongue that's constantly used to being bombarded with sweet taste. And this is a legitimate problem. It might sound a little woo-woo, but most people need to retrain their tongue and their palate to not be so sweet all the time so we have a wider range of tastes because the receptors, as I explained in the beginning of this video, play a role in the kind of hormones that get released. So if we screw up the receptors, we screw up some of this downstream hormone signaling. So what do you do, right? Now we know the diet soda's out, some of these baked goods that are with artificial sweeteners are out. Well, we do have one option, and the best option we have right now is Stevia, um, which is one great option. I'm gonna throw a couple actual options with Stevia, but Stevia is one that I really like. Um, it is a natural sweetener, meaning unlike the artificials that are synthesized in the lab, Stevia comes from a plant. It comes from the Stevia leaf, um, and there are compounds in that plant that essentially um, taste very sweet, but they don't have the calories. Um, and stevia in low doses is supported by the research to be um, very safe. I still would not recommend that you do it all the time um, and tons of stevia throughout the day, but if you're having a little bit of stevia in your coffee because you don't wanna have the sugar and you still like some sweet, totally fine, but I wouldn't have multiple servings of stevia throughout the day because what we do find is stevia too is not perfect. Um, our gut bacteria can change stevia into a compound called steviol, which can have some problems when it's absorbed in the body to damaging DNA. Again, this is at higher doses. At lower doses, stevia seems to be very safe um, and it actually uh, was looked at by the World Health Organization and they give stevia a thumbs up in the low doses. So something I do recommend and a lot of the guys on our Fit Follower Project program who have coffee in the morning or have tea and want a little sweetener, throw a couple drops or a little packet of stevia, good to go. Um, other ones that are good are erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol um, that again, doesn't have a lot of the problems with harming our gut bacteria um, as some of these artificial sweeteners, but can cause a little bit of GI upset, but you'll see it often um, in some of these sweeteners. And another one that actually can be good as well is monk fruit. And you're gonna see a lot of more of these organic products that are realizing that artificial sweeteners are not good are using monk fruit as a sweetener too, and that's certainly an option. For me, I use stevia as a go-to, it's very convenient. And now uh, when you go to restaurants and certainly a place like Starbucks, you'll see that they actually offer stevia packets because they're realizing people are like, don't want these artificial sweeteners. And now we actually have the science behind why there's actually good reasons to avoid them. So the answer is steer clear of the artificial sweeteners. Um, if you have them once in a while, like I might have a Diet Coke once or twice a year. Typically if I'm out uh, at a party with my friends or my family and there's a, let's say there's an open bar at a wedding um, and they don't have any good drinks available. Um, if I have a, a rum and Coke, for example, if that was something I were to order, I'd order a Diet Coke because in that one instance, not gonna be a huge deal. But I certainly wouldn't make artificial sweeteners a part of your daily routine. Um, if you have it once or twice a year, not a big deal, right? If I want you to have a go-to artificial, uh, 
natural sweetener source, I should say, um, that is good. So that could be stevia, erythritol, or monk fruit for you. You gotta try them out because they all taste a little bit differently to see which one works for you, but definitely go natural when it comes to your sweeteners. Um, and above all, as much as you can cut down on sweeteners, period, natural or artificial, it's gonna be better for you, better for your tongue, better for your life. So I hope you found this valuable, my friend. Um, I'm happy you're here at the Fit Father Project. Um, if you're on our 30-day program, I'm so grateful and I can't wait to hear about your incredible results with the meal plan and with the workouts. And um, happy you're here with the Fit Father Project Brotherhood. So I'll talk to you very soon, my friend, and let me know if you have any other questions.